Good afternoon, good afternoon, my Facebook friends. This is your boy, Coach P, here live on this blessed Thursday afternoon. Um, I have a guest tonight that's coming on, uh, one of my really, really good friends. Um, he'll be tagging in in a minute, but again, thank you all for tuning in to Sports Talk Live with Coach P. If you can, if you don't mind, you can subscribe to my YouTube Sports Talk page. It's uh, YouTube Sports Talk Live with Coach P. Uh, like it, and um, I hope that you know you get some good information on it that you can um, you can get. Um, Donald Fleming, what's up, buddy? But um, again, this is your boy Coach P here live Sports Talk on a Thursday afternoon. I'm waiting on my buddy to tag in and then we can get started and get ready because we have a lot to talk about. So I am very excited about my um my my, my special guest today. Coach Ron, what's up buddy? Um uh Coach Ron, I tell you what man, um I have gotten a lot of calls and from our um uh live we done on last week and that's what I'm trying to do. That's the most important thing. What I'm trying to do right there is get some information out to the kids, some coaches and everything else. And Coach Ron, I really appreciate it, man. And like I said, we're going to be back on again because me and you got some work to do. And I can see that me and you can get it done. And um, but in the meantime, you know, um, you know, I hope everyone had a good week. And, um, and I'm waiting on Coach um to tag in and, and let me know he's on. Coach, if you're on, let me know you're on, Coach. That's right, Coach. Proverbs, that's right, that's right. We are gonna, um, and just to let everyone know too that um, um, that we, we have a lot of um, events that's gonna be coming up. Um, I'm so excited. I think I came home today dancing and singing, telling my wife that I got some good news and big news that I'm going to share, um, you know, with with her and um, and with the with the Facebook page and my YouTube page is that um, I'm, I'm going down first. I'm going to start off with my hometown. I'm going down to Colleton County first and I'm going to do some interview with uh, some kids that play travel baseball, some that play JV baseball. We're going to have a group and we're going to put them together and we're going to interview the kids and they're going to, they're going to, you know, tell us, uh, coach Charles, you on? Nick. I think he's right here. I believe. Oh, that's not him. No, that's not him neither. Um, I'm looking for Coach Charles Brown, what I'm looking for from Battery Creek High School. Let's see if he's on yet. Charles Brown is who I'm looking for. Right there. Coach Charles Brown right there. He's on, but we got to try to tag him in there. He's right here. So we got to try to get him in there. Chris Holmes, what's up, buddy? Cree? Cree, I need to talk to you about something. When I get off live, I need you to call me. We need to talk about something. Something I'm trying to put together. Don't need... accept it. Coach Charles, I need you to accept it if you can. You're right, Coach Sean, because she got everything cooked. <laughs> and leave me alone, man. <laughs> That is right there. Okay, let's see if he accepts. Until Coach Brown comes on, like I said, we are, we are going down to uh, Collin County first, and I got a, a bunch of young kids that I want to interview live about some travel baseball, and these, these little kids can really play the game. And after I get finished doing the guys, I'm going to interview some young ladies that play travel ball, and I want to get them on, and we're going to talk about that because there's different things I want to do in my life. I just don't want to be talking to coaches all the time. 
we're going to be talking about uh, to the kids, uh, young kids, but their parents are going to be there, and we're going to um, we're going to do some really really excited things um, coming up on my YouTube page. But um, I'm looking for Coach Brown to tag in. I sent you a request, Coach. I need you to send it back to me. Send it back to me, Coach. Then we can get on and we can get started. That's him right there, Charles Brown. Let me see. Coach, when you see it, Coach, I want you to accept it. That's the only way you can get on there and we can go together. Waiting on Coach Brown to get on, and when he get on, we can get started with our show for the night. Um, you know, this guy, he's a he's a head coach over at uh, Battle Creek High School, a good friend of mine. And actually, I was talking to him today, and um, and kind of find out we family, and we didn't even know it. But that's a good thing. But um, I'm waiting on him to tag in, and we can get started with our live tonight. Live sports talk with Coach P, and um. Coach Brown, you're sharing the video, but I need you to accept it so we can you can um, you can come on live with you. I need you to accept it. I'm sending you the, the request and you just you know hit it. To... <laughs> What's like... up? Hey, Coach. Sorry <laughs> about that, man. I, I I didn't know what was going on for a minute, man. I was like, I, I know what I know. What I'm doing, man. <laughs> <laughs> Coach, you know this is what I do, man. Listen, this is what I do. I get my wife to sit right next to me when I do it because I'm I get lost when these kind of stuff happen, man. Because <laughs> You know, she's good at it, and I, hey, listen, I, I wouldn't be afraid to admit, man, she, she got it going on when it comes down to this technology stuff, man. Yeah. But anyway, Coach, man, it is so good to have you on, man. I, um, when I started doing this thing here a couple of weeks ago, and, um, I had some coaches on, and I had a coach, um, from, uh, Stahl High School, the boys coach, Coach Brelove, and I had, um, Coach Tron, he's a AU head coach, and he's a, a former, um, uh, high school basketball coach, and hopefully he's going to get back into the game. And I wanted to mix it with a little bit of old, a little bit of new, and a little bit of fresh meat and everything. But I I am just so happy, happy to have you on my show, man. You know, if you don't know, man, I, I started my uh, sports, talk, st I'm sorry, sports talk show with Coach P a couple weeks ago. And my goal was to get a lot of – get high school coaches on to talk to the people in your community and my life, because I have over, you know, I have many, many friends from all over the place. And a lot of, since I was doing this thing, coach, I have a lot of coaches done started calling me and asking me, well, who is this coach? And who's this coach? Oh, I like that information. So maybe something that you say tonight that can touch some other coaches out there and, um, you know, and, and get out there, get the information they need out there. But before, first of all, before we get started, you know, I just want to know, let everybody know how I really, really met you. <laughs> and uh, we were talking on the phone earlier today, and I was like, man, I know your dad, man. Me and your dad used to play ball together. Then I thought about it. I said, your dad is from my mom's hometown in Buford. And yep. I said, man, I think we cousins, man, but I <laughs> I'm not oh, really oh, well. sure. Oh, well. this is, if you come from that area, you're cousin. So guess what? Cousin Coach, what's up, man? You all right? <laughs> yeah, that'll work, man. That'll work. <laughs> I want to, I want you to introduce yourself in your way. You know, let everybody know where you're from, where you coach at, and uh, you know, I know you have a family and everything. And so, just let everybody know who you are. This is Coach Brown here. Well, I'm Coach Brown. My full name is Charles Brown. I'm born and raised in beautiful South Carolina. I'm still here. I'm the head coach at Battle Creek High School. I'm going into my third year this year. Um, I have a beautiful wife. I have um, a beautiful daughter. I have a son on the way. Um, I went to Voorhees College, played four years there, majored in sports management. Now I'm in um, Georgia Southern taking their um, master in kinesiology and concentration and coaching. So I'm getting after that master program and, you know, trying to have a successful third year. <laughs> oh, man. All right, Coach, I tell you. Well, I'm, I'm going to let people know how I really, really met you besides that right there is that um, 
I remember we had a basketball game one night. We were playing Buford. Yep. And usually when I walk in the gym, I got my headphones on. I'm locked in. You know, I'm thinking about what I'm going to do tonight. Uh, you know, put my game plan together. And as I walked into the gym, I saw the JV guys over there practicing. And usually, and this is not no hit toward no JV coach. Usually you don't see JV coaches coaching. They're just like, you know, run this, run that, hey, let's get out of here. <laughs> but as I come into the gym, I'm staring at y'all like, this guy is really, really coaching this team. I mean, look at him. So I'm telling my sisters, I coach, I said, look, look, look at this guy. They said, who is? I, said, I don't know him. I said, but I'm telling you, this is what a JV, a varsity coach needs, a JV coach that coaches these guys. So when their number is called, they are ready to go. Right. And um, I'm sitting there watching you, and I, I think I came over to you, and I said, after you got finished practicing, I sent the girls to the locker room to get dressed, and I came over to you, and I said, coach, I said, oh, man, I don't know you, man. I really don't know you, but I really, really enjoyed your practice for the little bit of time I've been here. And I said, man, I don't know if you, you know, don't know this, but God's telling me, man, that you're going to be a head coach one of these days. Did I not tell you that? <laughs> you did. And I didn't did. know you Indeed, at the time. I did that. not know you. Because yep. I've seen the work you were doing on the floor, and that's what it takes to be a head coach. Sometimes you just can't be a coach and just jump straight up top. You got to start somewhere. Right. And and I told you, I said, Coach, I said, what? I never knew that, you know, you were going to go back to your home school. Yeah. And, we, and the funny thing about it, we were making the schedule for the next year, and Coach Mullen said, well, I guess we're going to play Battle Creek. I said, well, we don't need to play them because they don't have a boys coach. And they go, yeah, right. they just need a new boys coach. I said, well, who is the <laughs> guy that's the coach on them? He said, um, it's a young guy named Coach Brown. I said, Coach Brown? I said, no, I don't know him. So I got on the phone. I called down to Buford. I said, I'm going to be nosy. I called my buddy Reggie at Buford. I said, Reggie, who is Coach Brown, the new coach at Battle Creek? He said, man, you don't remember him? Charles Brown, the young guy that was the Buford High School JV coach, I said, oh, my God. <laughs> I just told this guy he's going to be head coach. and right. never knew that you was going to be the head coach at your own home school. Look at God. The, the, huh? crazy thing about, the crazy thing about that one, man, like when you told me that, I got chills because, I, you know, I always wanted to be a, you know, a head coach. I, the, I think the job, well, the job prior to that, I was in California with my wife. Right. My daughter, she was born with tries from 18. So that's the only reason why we end up back here in Buford. Right, so, right. You know, I was I was I was already I was already exploring the coaching route um after college any anyway. But the crazy thing about it, like when you told me that, I got automatic got chills. <laughs> oh man. And the crazy thing about it, man, the coach humans, which was my middle school coach. Right. You know, he called me and told me that he was leaving. And I was like, I was like, I was lost for words, man. Like, you just told me that. Coach Humans told me that this is his last go round. So I'm like, man, now the job at Battle Creek is open up. And I'm contemplating going back and forth. I'm like, <laughs> like, I, 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 don't heard, like I don't heard the voice, man, from a, a stranger, like a person I didn't know. And then all of a sudden, this happened. So God, man. God work in mysterious ways, man. And when uh, he works, when he talks, man, you got to move on this, on this word. So that was good. Man. So, let me ask you a, a question up the top. Because, yes, you know, when, when I left uh, the coaching uh, going on two years now, how tough it is to be a head coach at your own home school? Oh, man, it, it's tough, man. It's, I think the first year, um, the first year I can say I had, when I, like, really looked at myself the first year, I was always talking about what we did or what right. it was like when I was there. Um, noting that, that was, you know, 10 years ago now. You know, I graduated in 2010. So, right. You know, I was always harping on what we did and how Coach Draft ran things and how successful we were. Uh, we went 25-2, and 13-0 at home. We went to Lower State our first year in 3A. So it was, like, I always kept on telling the guys that, man. But to now, it's a, it's a total di different generation. Right. Um, I, I think I do fit in the generation because I'm, a, you know, I'm, I'm going to say I'm young. Um, right. most, most guys are, you know, above age, been coaching for a while, but. The times, the times back then and the times now, man, are, are totally different. Totally different. A lot, a lot of adjusting that I had to do, uh, from the baggy shorts to guys wanting to roll their shorts all the way up now. So, just little things like that. Well, Coach, man, listen, man, I, I, I am so happy for you, you know, uh, for a head coach, man, because I tell you, listen, when I got out of the game two years ago, man, I thought about, I said, you know what, man, I don't know. I'm going to go back in this thing and not. And I, you know, I prayed on this thing and me and my wife prayed on this thing. And I was like, you know what? 
I think it's time for me to, 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 to just, just ease on out the, the, the right way. But last year during the pandemic time, and I remember, you know, uh, I've talked to a lot of my friends as coaches. How, as a young coach, as a young coach, how did you adjust yourself for as knowing that, you know, you don't know when you're going to play, you know, if you're going to play, how many games you're going to play that week? How do you as a coach, what adjustments did you have to make for you and your, first of all, for you? Because, you know, as a, as a coach, you know you're going to play on Tuesday and sometimes they see on a Friday and sometimes right. you play on Saturday. But then now you got to change your whole game plan the whole year, not just for this week. How did you do it for as a head coach, as a young coach? I think, um, I think like being more, like being more observant um, to everything. Because now, you know, with, you know, with COVID, the last season, COVID season, what we called it, we didn't know if. We could we could find out like at three forty five when schools out that you know a team wasn't coming down because you know their team caught COVID or anything like that. So we had to adjust like really fast on our feet on our end. Um, our our athletic our director coach Hayes, she's very wonderful with communicating. So you know she'll pick up the phone, text and call and things like that. But we did everything we needed to do um, with COVID season. Um, we prepared you know to play a game on Tuesday and Friday. Um, that's what, that's why I'm mean, not really think that's hurt us this year because, you know, last year was my second year. So with the high school, league only taking two year, two teams out of the, out of the region, right. we came in third this year. Oh um, man. Yeah. We came in third behind Oceanside and Bishop England. Right. So it was, it was hard to adjust, but at the end of the day, I think the message to our players and any basketball players was, um, don't take this game for granted, man, because for the seniors, this could be your last, you know, season. Like, let's say originally that didn't have a season this year, or North Charleston that didn't have a season. You t you can't take no games for granted. So I got an extra. I got an extra year. I, I'm gonna keep on coming back as long as God allows me to. But for the guys, for the seniors, you know, they they couldn't take anything for granted this year. So, right. Well, Coach Man, listen, man. I know. Uh, you know, I, as as a, just a well, as a fan of the game last year, I didn't go to. I think I probably went to one or two games and. And I was just, you know, looking and people was like, well, coach, what would you do? I was like, I'm, I'm not going to answer that question because that's not, I don't go to games now to ask questions about what, you know, another coach, what they should have done, this and that, because, you know, you know, everything, every, every, every coach runs their own program different. You know right. I mean? I mean, when I took over back at Collin County, I was at uh, Allendale Fairfax and I came back to Collin County and I, I was going to run it like when I was there before. And I was like, no, like you said earlier, time had changed. And I mean, time had changed. You got different players. You right. don't have, you know, I had back then, I had six twos and six threes, you know. Now I'm dealing with four fives and four fives and four fives and five. <laughs> so you got to change your whole game plan, you know. Right. It, it, it changes. But, Coach, another question that I want to ask you is that um, as a young coach, you know, I, I know that, you know, you know, my, my thing is when I, when I became a coach, my, my, I always was told by a coach, and, um, and I'm not afraid to say his name. He's the uh, coach at uh, Ridgeland High School, Hollyville, uh, Coach Flavor. Favor, I think that's – yeah, Coach Favor. He told me when I became a head coach, he said, Coach, reach the community. You know, and one thing I do see that you do on your Facebook page, you, you do a lot of um, networking, you know, stuff that you're doing. And, and I want to tell you that's some good stuff you're doing. That's some yeah, real good stuff you're doing. <laughs> so what else can you tell uh, the, the, uh, the, the people out there – about the community, what are you doing to really reach the community to get them in the stand? Uh, I'm, of course, you know, it's, I think it's a little bit easier for me because I'm from here. Um, my parents yeah. all, you know, whole generation went to Battery Creek High School. Then my, you know, my parents grew up around here. They, you know, they got good names. So anybody else, let's say moving to a city, if I was like, when I moved to California, I was always a people person. So it wasn't hard for me to, you know, meet the person or meet the principal, shake his hand and, you know, go out to eat with them or something like that. So I would say make friends, you know, communicate well. Um, don't be that shy person because at the end of the day, you need them just as much as they need you. Um, right. You are a big advertisement for the school as well. So when you go out in the community, like like I got on my Battle Creek shirt, I'm going to represent it when I go out so people know who I am when I go out, you know, go, go out and about. And then, of course, on social media, I think that's the biggest tool in this generation at all. Just right, like how right. I get this message out now, you know, we're doing this thing right here. The way you are on social, social media is going to always travel from this state to another state from across the world. So you got to watch what you're doing here and everything. 
and coach, I, and I, you said that, and, and that was going to be hitting on my next question, and you and you ran right into it like I want you to, is that we as coaches got to tell your players that social media is a big part of your recruiting. Right. And I, if if you can just talk on that for a couple of minutes, because I have known a lot of players that got to the point where. Um, a coach would call me and say, hey, coach, I see that, you know, you have a player that's, you know, pretty good or whatever. But um, I looked at the social media and I, I, I kind of don't like it. And what, what would you tell the, 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 the fans and the people that are looking at you right now and say, what would you tell them right now, coach? So I, I coach. I, this generation now, man, you got to coach. All, I don't, I'm not the best coach in the world, but right. in my situation, I coach all aspects. So. I'm also coaching a social media thing. Like, my name is Charles Brown. Your name is, you know, Perry Smalls. Right. Those are your names. Like, I don't have a um, young trigger. My name is not going to be young trigger on, right, on right. social media because at the end of the day, it's a bigger advertisement for you. So if you are, you know, a top player in the state or something like that, then they want to see, oh, Charles Brown, social media, see who he, who the coach is recruiting. It's, right. it's very important because, you know, coaches don't want to recruit cancer. It's already bad enough that we try to, you know, get rid of cancer in real life and the sickness. So coaches don't really want to – coaches don't recruit cancer at all. Like, you can be really skilled, really talented and things like that. But if the message that you're portraying, you know, doesn't fit the description of you, right? I don't see you going for it at all. And it's been a lot of kids, sad to say that, you know, fall victim to that because they didn't want to change their lifestyle based right. on the God-given talent that they was given. And, and coach, I know it being your third year, and, and I, I don't know if you feel the pain yet on this right here, but you know, I, you know, when you when you're coaching players, you know, and, and I'm knocking on parents, is where parents will always say, "Well, my kids belong, my kids going to college, and he's going to do this and that." And I always tell parents, "Listen, if your child is doing their job in the classroom right. and putting the work in on the floor, and yep. people, the people are going to see it." Because college coaches, when they come to recruit a kid, they ain't coming. They ain't coming straight to Coach Brown and say, "Okay, tell me about uh, uh, X, Y, and Z." They gonna first question they are gonna ask you is, "How's this person grades?" Exactly. Yeah. You know. Yep. And I want let's talk about that for a minute or two. For is how important it is for kids because I have kids out there that's listening now uh, through their parents' Facebook, and I had two or three of them that called me last week, Coach. It, it just it, I'm telling you, it's amazing since I started doing this show that people will call you and ask you questions like, coach, my coach ain't never tell me nothing, but I need to do with my grades. Like, huh? Right. I said, well, your parents should be telling you. I said, first of all, you should know if you want to go to college or whatever you want to do, yep. you have to get the books first. Yeah, Let's to. talk about that for us. You know, what would you tell a kid either on your team or on another team more important about what is important about grades? And I, like I tell my kids, and I, I was blessed to play, you know, college basketball. So right. I think they, you know, they believe in everything I say about the grades, things to make it to the next level. Because, yes, you can, you know, finish high school with a 1.0 or whatever. Sometimes you had to go to Juco route. But right. the, re, the GPA requirement is, is real true on the next level. Because at the same time, coaches in a, on a collegiate level, they look at they look at how many they are also um graded or uh, looked at on how many kids they graduate right they GPA as a team so it's very important um if you don't i always tell the kids if you can't get it done in the classroom you're not gonna be able to get it done on the basketball court because the bas playing basketball is a privilege that's right Unless right. you are a professional then yes you can make your bad grades like lebron james can can take a master's class and and fail at the end of the day, he he's making the money to you know live, right? At that at the end of the day, we still need our kids need good grades to get to to the collegiate level, and to maintain those good grades so that yes they can get that degree, and then go furthermore if so be, right? So it's very important because uh, you know going back to what we talked about for is uh, uh, JUCO and, and Division one, two, and three, every kid. It's not Division One player. No, it's so not at all. You can't, you can't, as a player and a parent, to say, my child's not good enough, my child is too good to be going to JUCO college. Well, I'm here to tell you, you know, <laughs> you better wake up because oh. JUCO is not a bad route for kids to go. Uh, because it, my point honestly, guard that played for me since she was in the eighth grade, me and her mom talked every day. 
and and I and I told her, I said, "Ma'am, your child is a great basketball player. She's she's hitting the books. She's doing what she's supposed to do. If she don't go Division One, we have to prepare her for Division Two, which I at the time I was basically saying junior college. And I said, going to junior college is not a bad thing because if you want to say you want to go to Clemson, and Clemson got five. I mean, well, got three or four point guards, and you're going to be number four or five. Why would you go there and then you have to sit for one for two years, and yeah. then you will now you will get frustrated? Well, Ma, I don't want to go back there. This young lady talked to me and said, Coach, I, I want you to help me make the right decision. And the decision that she made, and we sit down and we laid it out on the table, and the decision that she made and her mom made, and we all got together, and the coach came in to recruit her, she ended up going to the college right in her hometown where she could basically walk to the school. And they ended up playing in the junior college national championship her right. first year. And I was telling her, I said, see, we, see, see, y'all, y'all look at the big picture and then don't look at the small picture. Look at the small picture sometime because the small pictures might be the right thing. Exactly. You know, you know, and, and matter of fact, I gotta talk about it because she just she just logged on, so she know I'm talking about it. But it's I mean, the, the young lady that played for me, you know. You know, I watch her play college basketball this right here. And I'm telling you, as a coach, I was like, wow, should Omari really doing that? Yeah. And, and, and and like I tell her, you know, you, you got to shoot the ball more. I used to tell her in high school, you got to shoot the ball more. As soon as she get to college and she get out there, uh, I talked to the, her coach the first couple of weeks, and her coach said, well, one thing I got to do is get her to shoot more. I was like, wow. I think I told her that, you know. <laughs> but, you know, it's it's it's, it's – it's it's a blessing, coach, where you can coach a kid from uh from small from four is rec league to 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 uh, middle school and get him to high school ball and you can see this person grow. And I remember I remember my first job coaching and they told me that I want you to coach uh rec basketball and I said me coach rec basketball. <laughs> I'm not coaching no – I'm just – I'm thinking the big head, like, I'm not coaching no rec basketball. I'm not no rec basketball coach. Right. But I had to start off first, and I did my first year rec basketball, and I, I had three guys and three girls on my team. And I thought – I ain't had no hair then. I had a little bit of hair. Those six <laughs> kids drove me crazy. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, I said, like, man, you know what? I think I'm going to do this right here. I like this right here. This coaching yeah. thing is – Getting to be pretty good. And yes. then I end up coaching the middle school team, and they tell me, um, if you coach the middle school team, I need you to coach the JV, uh, not the JV, the middle school boys and girls. And my salary coach back then in the 90s, if you, if you, if you hear this, don't flip. My <laughs> salary back then was $250. I thought I'd been the richest black man in the world <laughs> for $250. But – <laughs> I wasn't in it for the money at the time because I always wanted to be a coach. And I was always tell I was always told by a, a coach that you gotta crawl before you walk. You so said you just can't right. jump up that big. You can't jump right. up that big. But coach, what what is your uh um I know summertime last year was kind of hectic. You couldn't really do nothing. And like I say, when you when you're young, when you when you're young in this thing here and you're trying to get the program built, you know, it was rough for you young coaches and you new coaches to come in. And then all of a sudden, this pandemic came, and then all of a sudden, you had to shut down for the summer. Right. So, what this year right here? What What are you doing different for us? Uh, uh, what have you done different that you couldn't do last year? Obviously. Well, I just start from my first year. So, with me going in my third year, I haven't had um, a full, you know, summer workouts like I had a little bit this year right here. I think now uh, with summer workouts this year, our gym is getting a little bit um, redone with the referendum. But still, right. my first year, I got hired in July. So I only had a couple of weeks um, right. to really it's work tough. with my guys. Um, the year after, which was, you know, COVID season, the second year, everything was shut down now. So I didn't have oh. a summer at all. Right. So now, you know, the third year, you know, I, I'm, I we had a couple of weeks. We had a couple of weeks where we went strong. Um, the day week. Is about to end this week right here. So next week, the 12th, is when we can get back to going. But, you know, this is looking like more of a summer um, that I can actually look forward to and actually, you know, developing the kids, um, right. do skill development a little bit more, get out in the community, do a little bit more fundraising and things like that because summer is where, you know, you really start to play basketball. 
Um, that's where it worked out for us. We started playing, going Presbyterian, Voorhees College. We started hitting summer camps and things like that. And, you know, that's what made us build that chemistry early for us to have, you know, that winning season of two years that we were, you know, I was playing at, Bas at Battery Creek. So summer, so do, summer work is very important. Do any of your kids play AU basketball? Yeah, some, some of them do. A couple of them do play AAU basketball. Um, I keep up with them a little bit. Um, but yeah, they, they do play, they do play AAU basketball around here. I'm going to give you a word of, of advice for is AU ball. AU ball is a great thing. And, um, yep. and you said something that was key that, you know, you kept up with them and, you know, you're trying to, you know, but just remember as a young coach, don't burn yourself out yep. too early. <laughs> don't burn yourself out too early. If, if you want to see what I'm talking about, look at the top of my head. You see anything up there? <laughs> 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 <Don't>, <laughs> I, I started I started being a head coach at at, at, at I think it was uh, about twenty something years old. And I you know, I used to do football, basketball, and baseball for twenty something years. So when you finish with basic basketball with, with football all summer and then you got football season, then you soon you jump out of football, you jump right into basketball. Right. And if you know, if you make the playoff, the season go a little longer, and then all of a sudden when basketball season over, oh, I'm the head coach of baseball, then I jump right into baseball. I did it for twenty something years. Lot, and I man. early want to show that my kids were growing up so fast. And, uh, I'm looking like, oh my God, my son done graduated, and I ain't really because I missed it because right. I'm working on coaching, coaching, and in the summertime, till I said, you know what, I need some free time to myself. And the it's year that down. I came out, the year that I came out of coaching, I um, I took a vacation, and me and my wife were on the cruise, and she's like, what, why do you feel so happy? I said, well, damn, I ain't had a vacation. <laughs> And so long, I don't know how to act. No, you know, man, I'm having food on the boat. I mean, I'm having a ball because I'm yeah. now away from sports and I'm, I'm relaxed and knowing that I'm going to my last season. And then my last season was so fun because it was just like, it was just a smooth ride. You know, I'm saying to you as, as, a, as a young coach, you know, enjoy the game. Enjoy yeah. the game, coach. Enjoy the game. Learn much you can. Never think that you cannot learn no more game about the game of basketball. Right. You know, because when you think you know everything, your players get the big head, and then all of a sudden, when you start getting those L's, you're going to want to know why. Well, why am I losing? Why am I doing this? You know, what you're doing, I see you doing on Facebook with your players and you training them, coach, continue to do that same thing and watch. I'm telling you, I said it before, <laughs> that you become a head coach. At high school, I knew you. I know what's going to happen. Yeah, I'm gonna say this on this Thursday afternoon. One of these days, <laughs> Coach God gonna bless you. You become a college coach. Maybe at your alma mater, or maybe another school. You're gonna become <laughs> a head coach in college basketball soon. I'm telling you now. And I and I I don't I'm I'm all I'm a humble person, and I think that's the reason why you know I I jumped out on faith and I really took this position at Battle Creek because Coach Humans, I was you know I was talking to him, man. He was he was saying this can either because I had a great year at Buford High. That year you saw me, it was man, it was it was good, man. Those players were good. Every the parents, community was good. Everybody was supporting. So you know, after everybody seeing me doing what I did back here at Buford High, it was like you know going to Battle Creek can either enhance you know you as a coach or it can tear right. you down. Well, I'm always a positive person. Like my my whole life slogan is conquer it all. So. In the back of my mind, I was like, okay, this is gonna be a challenging thing. But at the end of the day, it's gonna get it's gonna get done. It's gonna get right. done. And and I truly believe, yes, the first year I got into coaching at Battery Creek, man, I was I didn't have no time to my wife, my kid, or anything like that, because I was just so not just passionate about it, but I was trying to get everything correct. Right, right. So, right. I, I, now, I told you. So, yeah. <laughs> So now it's, it's, it's going, it's going better now. You know, we spend a lot more time together and, you know, I, I'm able to control more of my time and not get right. my hands out of with a lot of things. So that's right. good. Well, coach, just hold one second here for a second. We're going to come back with another thing again, yep. everybody. Thank you for, uh, uh, we had live with uh, coach Brown from uh, battery Creek high school, the boys basketball coaching. It's your boy, coach B here. Um, sports talk coach P at gmail.com. That's my email. So if anybody want to email me, to get in touch with Coach Brown to ask some questions. I'm pretty sure he would answer. You can hit his inbox, or you can go to YouTube, Sports Talk, live with Coach P. Hit the like button. 
But I'm going to meet Coach Brown, and we're going to stay on down here and live, and we're going to talk about some, some more stuff. And um, Coach Brown, I, I got some um, exciting things coming up. I got um, I got some great coaches coming on. Um, I got okay. Coach Staley from AC Flora. I have Coach Champagne uh, that uh, coaches here in Charleston, and she does training now. And this is, you know, all I want to do is I'm trying to reach out to the community. Sometimes I can't get to the community, and I know that everybody basically on Facebook. And that's right. what we want to do. We just want to reach out to everybody because, like I said, I got so many friends on Facebook. Some some I know and some I don't know. Some I have reached, you know, some people have texted me and said, hey, I saw a YouTube page, and, um, and I really, really enjoy it. But, man, I'm telling you, Coach Brown, I, I am so excited for you to see uh, how high you're going to take Batter Creek. Batter Creek always been respected as a right. program uh, a long time ago. So it just ain't like, you know, you got there and all of a sudden Batter Creek is just that. Batter right. Creek always had a good program. But what they did was they add some more spice to it. And they brought in a young coach, a uh, former player. And, and and you say the key word earlier, that a young coach right on their level, basically. Yep. So, I mean, it's, it's like, you know, if you want to get, and again, I'm, I'm a humble person, and I'm not one of those to be, you know, like I said, the best coach. I'll be boasting anything like that. But I, it came to realization that if you want to get to the next level, if you want to know how to get to the next level, I'm right here. Like I came from the same, I came from the same school you came from. I walked this exactly the same halls you walk. I'm from the same community you from, and I made it to the next level. So the statistics and the negative stuff you you hear about Batty Creek and the teachers and things like that. I went through the same process and I came out, you know, fine and look at me now. So I always tell these kids, like, if you want to, if you want a mirror, I'm, I'm right here. I'm right, I'm right here. So <laughs> yeah, that's, that's good stuff, man. But listen, man, coach Brown, man, it, it is, it is, you know, this year coming God's will that you know, I'm going to get out to uh, some of your games and I'm, I'm going to get a, a schedule from you and, um, you know, and I'm coming and I'm, I'm I want to be, you know, um, you know, I, 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 a lot of coaches say, Coach, you need to be a mentor to some of these younger coaches and do this, and do this, and do that. You know, I feel that I am a mentor to some coaches and, I'm, yeah. and, and because somebody had to pave the way for Coach P to be where he at. Somebody right. had to pave the way for Coach Brown to be where, where he's at. Yep. And when coaches give you advice, you know, never say, I, I, I'm not going, man, I don't want to listen to that, man. Go ahead and talk to that. You know, listen, he may he may not make yep. sense to you, but he may say one thing just to say, you know what? Oh, man, I really, I get it. Because when you walk off and you start to walk in and you're walking by yourself and you're getting to them points where it just, it's just a lonely world, yep. go back to some of them conversations when, when, them, when, when them old coaches and older folks talking to you and telling you you should do this, you should do that. because a lot of young coaches these days, they got the big heads like, oh, you, you, I don't need you to tell me. No, I'm going to do such and such. Well, how do you think that you're going to run a program if, if you don't have the players to run what you want to run? Yep. You know, if, if, if you got five, seven footers, yeah, you're going to be pretty good. But where, where your guards at? You know, seven footers ain't going to be able to drive, drive the ball all the way up the floor. Exactly. You know, so you got to work for what talent you have. And I, I'm telling you, Coach, man, I, I, I said it over and over. I surely enjoy watching you coach. Uh, uh, Buford uh, JV team, and I watched you my last year coaching Battery Creek team. And matter of fact, when you were coaching at Battery Creek, and, and y'all came to my gym, and y'all that that game before that season before I left, and um, I had to go in and do a uh, talk to the press and stand it, uh, put some stuff in the paper. She kept telling me, "Come on, come on, let's do this and get us." And no, I'm not going anywhere. I, I'm gonna sit right here. I'm sitting here for a reason. So she's like, well, I'm going to leave. I, and I had not been distressed. All right, bye. I mean, because I, I was watching you from the tip ball until the, until the uh, four minutes left in the fourth quarter. You were calm. You didn't work the referees. You didn't get yourself all upset. You know, you were just calm. I'm thinking the whole time, this boy ain't going to last long like this here because <laughs> you got to get – I had to learn this a long time ago to an old fella tell me, Coach, you will have a heart attack on that floor if you don't calm yourself down. But yeah. that's just my type of coaching. And I had to learn that about five years ago. I was at practice because I love to practice. Practice is my favorite part of coaching. Yeah. And I felt so bad that whole week at practice. And we had a game that Tuesday, and I, I couldn't coach that game because I felt so bad. 
And I went to the doctor. The doctor said, well, what do you do for a living? I said, well, I work in the school <laughs> system. That's number one. And that's probably tell you I'm working at a four-year school where a lot of kids at. Number two, I work in my ho- uh, home school. You know, it's not a bad thing. I'm not talking bad about my own home school. Then number three is, you know, I, I, <laughs> I coach high school basketball. And he said, uh, I bet you yell, scream, shout, jump, do it. I said, yes, sir. I said, well, my cones, everything on my feet hurt me after every game because I give everything I got. He said, well, I'm going to tell you what. If you can make plans for a funeral here in the next couple of weeks, you better calm yourself down. Yeah. Your blood pressure is so high <laughs> that I'm, I'm ashamed to tell you. Hey, Coach, yes. let me tell you something. It took a rude uh, awakening to say, you know what? You better calm down and enjoy this game the right way. And I, right. I tell you, I watch you, Coach. I watch you. That game, and you were so calm. And I don't want to know how you've done it. That's the way you do it is the way you do it. But, Coach, whatever you doing, whatever you doing, stay right there where you're at, son. Because I'm telling <laughs> you, I can see you going higher and higher in this coaching game. And that's the, the crazy thing about it, man. Like, coaching does cause, you know, stress and, you know, yeah. cancer and things like that, man. Especially for you know our race and things like that so it's good that we find something that we we have something that we enjoy but i think the most the most thing about me about being more you know calm man i coach hard in practice there so you the go yelling and the yoke the yelling and everything i'm more passionate about all that stuff is in practice like it's a saying that i, I think i heard it from my my, my college coach coach Derek mitchell practices you no know, coach is supposed to be in practices and your players are supposed to win games. So any situations in the game that, you know, my players don't know how to handle, of course you got timeouts, but you also have film that, you know, once we can, once we break it down, we can go back and I can coach them. And, right. You know, things like that. But all my yelling and all that stuff, man, getting in drills and all that stuff, that happens in practice. So I tell, <laughs> I, I, tell I tell the kids, man, I like to wear suits. I like to look good, man. So you you're not gonna see me getting all crazy in my nice suits and things like that. So well, I tell you what, Coach Brown, in, in the next couple of years, I want you to see that same thing because I'm telling you, you got to a point where you had to do a skip and hop on that sideline. I, I, I remember, I remember a couple of years ago, uh, uh, I was coaching a game and man, I was yelling and jumping and uh, I had some shoes on and brand new pair of shoes. Boy, I was showing them things off and all of a sudden I went to slide. And I felt my feet on the bottom of the floor. I'm like, and I'm looking down like, what the world just happened? The bottom of my sole came off because I was jumping, yelling so loud. And my players looking at me like, cool, you know your shoes bust? I'm like, my shoes ain't bust. So I eased and looked at like, oh, my God, it's so embarrassing. So i glad it happened in the fourth quarter because I was sitting down, and when the, and the coach came to shake my hand, I just stood straight up and I was like, "Hey, coach, man, good game, man." I said, "Man, my back just hurt. And I really didn't want. I was lying because I didn't feel I didn't want to walk because my uh, <laughs> my feet was touching the floor, you know." But um, coach, man, again, man, I, I really, really appreciate you coming on my show and uh, um, and 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 sharing information, some things that people. Uh, can get and take back to either their team or somebody in the community because what, what I'm noticing and, and like I would use for my hometown, you know, one time coach, you know, used to see kids go out there and play basketball um, at, at the outside, not I won't say the rec center. They would use the outside facilities in their communities. But in my community in, in Collin County, that have uh, uh, gone like to me wash away. All right. I am going to um, um, challenge my county as Collin County. I may not live in that Collin County anymore, but I'm going to challenge my county to to update the basketball facilities outside in these communities. Because one time, Coach, you always would find a basketball um, uh, uh, court in somebody's community. But you cannot update the basketball facility and then y'all go tear it up and then we have the kids have nothing to play because right. now kids got games and stuff like that and that they play that all day long and they might get out the house for an hour or they might come out at our uh, six thirty and go play uh, do something and go right back in because when we were back in school you know we didn't have those games and we didn't have cars or whatever so wherever there was a basketball court a baseball field a football right. field we were out there doing that and now right. time has changed. And yeah. I, I just want uh, uh, um, the, the, the parents and, and, and out there that's listening to this, 
get your kids out there to do something in the summer, not just, you know, uh, playing games in the house. You know, I know they have to do their chores in the house, but they need to get out there and do something. If they're not working, get them out there to uh, get up two or three miles in a walk. Get a couple – you should be jogging. You ain't old as me, so you should be there to jog a little bit. I walk – I just walk fast. I don't do fast I used to go. But, you know, man, I'm going to have you back on, Coach, uh, when basketball season starts because um, I know uh, right now a lot of coaches are on vacation. I don't want to bother them. You know, all of them now about getting on, but I got some great coaches lined up to come on. Yeah. Like I say, um, I'm going to come to Buford, and um, and, and we're going to sit down, we're going to have lunch, and, and we're going to just talk. And um, yeah. and I, I just want you to stay humble, Coach. Enjoy the game. and, and let Because I, I want to see in the next couple of years, you know, and, and I'm telling you, Coach, you're going to do some great things at Battery Creek. And, and I hope Battery Creek fans are listening to this. You got a great coach. You got a young coach that's very active in the community. He he loved and he had passion for the game of basketball. And he wants to see your kid do great things. He just don't want to see your kid graduate. But he wants to see every kid graduate, but he wants to see every kid have great grades in school. He wants to see great behavior. And not just doing basketball season all year long. So, Coach, whatever you're doing, whatever you're doing, continue to do it. You know, yes, I, I know I see you, you know, I, I, you post something on Facebook a couple of days ago. You said uh, a student walked in your room and said, well, you always reading the Bible. You know, <laughs> that right there, I'm telling you, I said, I know this man ain't sitting there, you know, in basketball, you know, but I'm thinking that's your momentum. That's what you, that's what you do. You know, hey. I know every coach before a game have a, 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 a different thing they do. My thing was I used to drink a Gatorade, not a Gatorade. I used to get uh, a Sprite <laughs> and some um, grapefruit juice. And I used to mix it up and drink it with some peanut. Every game, my plan is all like, Coach, what are, you, what are you doing? That's just what I do. You know, and when you say that on Facebook, man, I said, you know what, man, this boy is just awesome, man. I mean, Coach, I'm really happy for you, man. I'm really happy for you, and I want to see you do great things. If you continue to keep doing the things you're doing, it's always it's gonna be higher and higher for you, coach. Yes, sir. And I, <clears throat> when it when it, like I work in like I, I was at I'm a behavior interventionist. That that job I was at Buford Middle this year I'd be at Battery Creek doing the same job. But even in that job right there, like I don't want to do nothing but coaching. Um, but that job right there is more of my thing because I love to also mentor kids that's not playing basketball. So, you know, those those are the trouble kids on uh, things like that. But Kids like that, they need to see more, you know, they need to see more men want to, you know, read about God and, you know, worship God and praise God and things like that. So it was good. It, that gave me chills, too, when a kid came in and he said, you're always reading your Bible. You want to be a preacher or something. Right. <laughs> I, I just, I, I couldn't say nothing, but no, I'm just, I'm just trying to get closer. Even though I think I'm close, I'm still trying to get closer because sometimes right, I right. Feel, I'm, you know, I'm far away. So. I can. I just walk in practice one day. I just walk in practice sometime and just start singing, you know, gospel songs, and right. everybody start laughing and like, "Coach, man, what's wrong?" I said, "Just, <laughs> just singing, man. That's it." But yeah, that's we always keeping God in the midst of it all, man. That's the only way we're gonna keep on prospering and you know, that's climbing right. up anyway. So, well, Coach, man, listen, man. I, again, I, 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 if I, if I could just reach out and give you a hug, man, I, I wish I could, man. But listen, man. I love you, brother, man. If you ever, sure. you know, need someone to talk to, you know, I might not give you the best advice on uh, uh, coaching basketball, the X and O's, man. But sometimes I tell people, it's not all about the X and O's, man. It's just that, you know, you got to stay humble. You know, yep. if you stay humble like the way you are, you're going to be in this game a long time. And you're going to come back to this day and you're going to say, man, I remember that bald head guy told me <laughs> information right here because somebody told me. And that's where, I, where I'm at, day because I stayed humble. And, yep. and again, Man, I, I really, really appreciate you coming on, man. And coach, like I say, man, if I can ever, ever do anything for you, please let me know. Yes, sir. I will. I'm gonna also give you, a, um, give you a shout out. So thank you for allowing me to be on, you know, your your podcast or your your TV show, your YouTube channel. Um, to you know, spread more positivity, um, from young coaches and old coaches as well. Well, not old coaches, but experienced coaches. Right. Uh, I'm also going to be, you know, looking at, looking, looking forward to, you know, see the next guy on here to learn one or two things with him. 
um, before we got on, I sent two messages to some college coaches to see if they was having some kind of, you know, summer workouts for me to, right. you know, engage in summer practice. So I'm always a sponge to the game. I can never stop learning. Um, so I'm going to be looking forward to whoever coaching or whoever coaches you bring on, whether it's females or male, whether it's baseball, a coach is a coach. So anything that I can take from them, I'm going to try to bring back to my program. So again, I thank you for starting something like this because I, like I said, I love being a sponge, man. Hey, man, listen, man. Listen, I'm also let you know, too, that I, I got this as a plan, too. I, I was telling my wife about it. What I'm going to do, too, is um, uh, it won't be this year, but next year, God's will, the things look the way they're looking now. I'm trying to host me a golf tournament, a coach's golf uh, tournament. Okay. Now, I, I, I'm not the best golf. Well, I'm not even <laughs> the best golf. I ain't, I'm not good at golf. I'm going to just tell you now, if you see me swinging a golf club, coach, and you left or right, you might want to get way back because I might, I, I'm just telling you, because I see a lot of coaches playing golf. And what I want to do is I want to, um, I want to get, you know, much coaches I can in the uh, Buford, uh, Hampton, the Ridgeland, the Esther, the Allendale, the Bamberg, uh, Dorchester County, Somerville, uh, Charleston. We want them all to come together and we want to have uh, 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 coaches gather. And I know they have the coaches clinic. But what I want to do is I want to get these coaches in the low country because we need to build a bond because, you know, I don't, I don't, one thing I don't like, I don't like when one coach don't like this coach and this coach don't like coach. Well, I know when, when you're playing against each other, it's not, I don't like you, but Hey, I'm trying to win. I'm trying to beat my, my team, be competitive. And I, my goal is when I walk on the floor is my goal is to win, but in exactly. order to win, I got to put the work in. And right. it's just, just some stuff that I want to do that, uh, that I, I got plans and goals. Cause when I'm working, in the daytime, I think my wife gets tired of me calling her. I said, baby, I, I guess what? I got another plan I just put together. I got another plan I just put together. And the day, you know, I was thinking, I was, you know, talking to my best friend on the phone. He said, man, who are you interviewing today? I said, man, I got my main man, Coach Brown. I'm telling you, this young guy is, is, is excited, man, about the game, man. And like I say, Coach, I'm going to say it over and over, man. I love you. You know, yes, if sir. you ever need me, man, you call me, man. Like I say, man, if anybody's out there, man, that want to talk to Coach Brown, man, hit him in his message box. Now, I'm not giving nobody's cell phone number out. That's what I would never do. But, you know, if you want to hit me up, you can go to my YouTube page, Sports Talk Live with Coach P on my YouTube page. Or email me, Sports Talk Coach P at Gmail. Or you can hit me in my message box and you want to, you know, ask me, can I get in touch with Coach Brown or either one of my former coaches I already have. Coach Brown, you will be on YouTube probably by tomorrow. And I, everybody out there, coach, want to see it, man. And, and I just want to be a blessing, man, because when I told my wife, when I walked away from the game, I said, I would never ever coach no more. I don't want to do with sports anymore. And I, I think God had to tell me, listen, don't, don't, don't be like that. Because yeah. you can reach somebody that needs something from you one of these days. And, and if you show your, you know, my, my granddad used to say, you show, excuse my name, if you show your ass now, you know, it's, <laughs> I don't want to say the rest, but. You know, you, you got to be humble in this game of coaching, man. Oh, and yeah. I come to find out, man, you know, um, um, if you're humble in this game, and, you know, you, you may not like what everybody else do, but just do what Coach Brown do. You do what you do. Yeah. Continue to run your program the best of your ability and keep your program clean, Coach, because you want thing you don't want to do, you don't want to get dirty in your program because if, if you do something to somebody and, and, and people will turn that whole story around, and make yep. you feel like you're the worst person in the world. So you keep your program clean, coach, you know, and, and stay above water and, and stay in the word, you know, and, and do, you know, do right by your players. You know, if, if they come to you and ask you a question you may not understand, call an experienced coach. Coach, what would you do in this situation? You don't have to do it in front of the player. But right. I'm telling you, because if I, I can see this thing in the next 10 years or, or less, I'm going to be looking at TV in my rocking chair, <laughs> holding my North Carolina cup with some coffee in there, I said, man, I told y'all that boy was going to be a college coach one of these days. I'm telling you, <laughs> if you're out there in Facebook land and y'all see this little fella sitting in that chair right there, <laughs> that's your man right there. That, that, that's a good young man, young coach right there. I mean, that blood's still running warm in your vein like the old people say in church. Yeah. But coach, listen, man, I appreciate you so much, man. And, um, and if you ever need me, coach, to do anything for you, man, don't don't hesitate to call. Just do not call me to come coach. Don't call me. <laughs> <laughs> you just you, you you still you still coach. You just doing a different form of coaching now. Huh? 
You still you still coaching. You're just doing a different form of coaching. You're yeah, coaching man. Yeah. And you were right. And that's what my wife said. You know, you, you're coaching, but you're just doing it a different way. I just, yeah. I, you know, when I, that last game, coach, everybody would not believe this. That last game that I coached in my last practice before when I got knocked out in the playoffs, I was coming across the bridge in uh, on Dorchester County, County Line, and I slowed it, my truck down. And I got out the truck. I ain't never told my wife I'd done this. I got my whistle, and I wrapped it in my hand, threw it in the water. Wow. wow. Threw it in the water. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it was all over there. It was all over. Right. It was all over. But I, I, I enjoyed the ride, and, boy, I love to come out. Now, you know, when I come to games now, I'm, I'm going to come, and I'm relaxed, man, you know. And, you know, and I don't like when coaches come to me and say, man, what do you think I should have done? No, no, you the coach. You coach exactly. that team. I'm coming here to support you. Good or bad, I'm coming to support you. You know, yep. I might tell you that, man, coach, uh, you know, uh, you know, different thing, but I would never tell a coach how to coach your team, what to run, this and that. You run what you want because you're the head coach. Because yep. when you when you see people sitting in that stands, you must be doing some good things. And I always, a coach always told me that. If you see people sitting in the stands, you're doing something good. Yep. When you don't see people sitting in the stands, uh, something getting ready to happen. <laughs> something getting ready to happen. Yeah. But I, I t- another thing, man, I just I just want to thank all my coaches. Um, of course, my dad being my first coach, um, Coach Humans, Coach Draft, Coach Mitchell, Coach Shaney, all my coaches that I work with on my coaching staff, um, Coach Matt, Coach Moss, Coach Woody, Coach Alexander, everybody, Coach Hayes, anybody and everybody that's supporting me, praying for me through my coaching journey, I, I you know, I want to thank for, you know, being in it and being a part of it as well. So right. I believe good things are going to happen if I stay this way and, you know, that's that's what's going to happen. I'm, I'm going to take it day by day. I'm not looking ahead. I'm worrying about today and tomorrow. Get here, God willing. So, Hey, man, <laughs> Coach, I appreciate you, man. Again, man, I thank you so much. And like I say, anybody that want to meet Coach Brown, you can hit me in my inbox and you can hit him in his inbox. It's under uh, Charles Brown. He's the head coach at Battle Creek High School. Or uh, you can hit me in my email, Sports Talk, Coach P at Gmail. Uh, or YouTube, Sports Talk Live with Coach P. And again, I thank you so much, brother. And I'm going to stay on a little bit longer. I got some things I need to cover, man. But, Coach, I will holler at you later, brother. Yes, sir. Thank you, man. Yes, sir. All right. Again, that was uh, Coach Charles Brown from Battle Creek High School. Um, um, I thank you all for listening. I thank you all for tuning in. I see a lot of people that, that, that that's watching that I cannot, you know, uh, thank y'all so much. I, I, uh, D. White, man, I appreciate you coming on. Um, Audrey Elmo, uh, um, uh, Deidre Boss, oh man, I mean, my aunts and everybody is on this thing. My kids are on it. Oh man, my brother in law is on it. You know, uh, Latrice Lemon's on it. My wife's on it. My aunt Tanya's on it. Um, um, oh man, I swear, oh, there's so many people, man. My son, PJ, what's up? Ron, what's up, buddy? Man, it is so, so good. Uh, Jesse, man, best guitar in his house. I'm sorry, Jesse, best guitar around, playing around, man. Uh, man, I tell you, I, I, you know, I, I appreciate every last one of you for tuning in. But listen, I got things that I want to do, and it's going to happen with the good Lord work. And, and the first of all, that you know, um, uh, I'm I'm coming to Collin County, to my hometown, and I'm going to do a live show with um, some middle school travel ball players, little little kids, and we're going to sit down and we're going to talk baseball. Then after that, that same day, uh, my goal is to reach uh, some travel ball kids, uh, uh, girls that play travel ball and talk to them and see what's going on with them in travel ball. You know, you know, uh, Creed, make sure you call me after live. We need to talk about some stuff. And I got so many things that I want to do in my community first. You know, people always say, make sure you start with your own community. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go into Walterburg and we're going to try to get some things done, you know? And my thing is I want to get to the County, to the Recreation Center, man, and see, Hey, you know, what can we do to update these basketball coaches? What can we do to, uh, you know, to, to make sure that they're safe for the kids? And there are some good basketball coaches out there for the kids, but you got to take care. You know, they can't get out there and uh, get uh, the job done, and all of a sudden we all tear them all up. But anyway, again, thank you for tuning in with your boy Coach P live here on your uh, on, on your Facebook message. And again, my email is sportstalkcoachp at gmail.com. Or, oh, Go to my YouTube page, Sports Talk Live with Coach P. Like it. You know, uh, I would download Coach Brown stuff um, in a matter of time. And again, um, I will not be on 
on Saturday, uh, Saturday, uh, uh, this Saturday, because I got some other things I have to take care of. But I will, uh, and I probably will be on tomorrow with another coach. I, I don't want to say what coach it is, because I got to make sure I clear it with him, because I got to change it from Saturday. But again, I thank you, I thank you, and I thank you. And remember this, I love you. And guess what? And there's nothing you can do about it. This is your boy, Coach P, live in my kitchen. I'm getting ready to eat, and I'm getting ready to lay it down and get ready for tomorrow. Because I love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Cree home. Make sure you call me, big guy. Until then, I love you. Peace.